combatants. And that's right, Joe. I mean, the uh, our government, our country, was not founded on hatred, but on freedom and independence. Our founders came over from a country that was pretty much uh, regulating everything that everyone was doing or could do or couldn't do. The founding fathers uh, created a constitution based on freedoms and liberties, not on restrictions. Uh, and part of it was that we would be treated equally, everyone, regardless of race, color, creed, national origin, or religion. Uh, but what you see nowadays is, is a, a fuming of, of hatred from some individuals. Um, and, and in some cases, their hatred isn't targeted only to a specific ethnic group, but a group of individuals. You know, going back to my point. Ted Cruz, well, going, what a crazy man. Right, but going back to my point, what you have now is you have, for example, the legislative Republican majority targeting school teachers, targeting seniors. On that bill of the $100, Medicaid will now only pay $5. So you got 80 from Medicare, five from Medicaid. So the hatred is spilling over not only as to uh, someone's uh, ethnicity or uh, background or place of birth, but now it's a classes. You're, you're targeting classes. You're targeting teachers. You're targeting seniors. Because the middle class is disintegrating thanks to them. The, the middle class is struggling as we always have. Joe, and and unless but not like before, this is bad. Well, We're it's it's what I mean is everybody is doing their best to to work hard to provide for their families. Yeah, but, but and, it, and it's their difficult. Legs. You used to have a chance. They're taking the chance away. They are, and, and they are, and they're doing it consciously. <clears throat> the 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 argument is that there's always been you know a, a, a class war, if you will, between the haves and the have-nots. And those that have the money and the resources to do what they want and choose and please don't care or don't want others to be part of that class. And so you're right, they start cutting, they start chopping. And, and it makes it difficult for America to have the ability to continue on the basis upon which it was founded. It is social it's not even social, it's a class warfare. It's anti-American. Because, because it, it is anti-American, because America was founded on opportunity. The opportunity as you, Joe Flores, to do what you can within your abilities and desire and motivation to accomplish. Not because someone else tells you that you're not gonna be able to do it and prevents you from doing it. And, and what, you're, what they're doing here is, remember what I said, Latinos, Hispanics are the largest group of public students in the classrooms and you are then cutting public education funding knocking out the teachers what kind of opportunities is someone who is not educated going to have in tomorrow's economy exactly slim to none if we didn't have slim decent to none. public education when you and i graduated in the 80s and went on to college and graduated in the 90s and became lawyers uh, we got that chance not because we had money, but because we had teachers, good teachers that believed in us, free education, quote unquote free. It's not so free. We pay high taxes for that education as we found out later. But to those kids, it is free. And if they didn't have teachers, good ones that believed in us, I don't think we'd be here today. I, I agree, Joe, completely. I mean, I, I can name you teachers uh, that were very instrumental uh, at points in my life that were it not for them, I don't know that I would have continued in school. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. You know, the, the, the temptations are there, you know, not to go to school, not to go to college, instead to go work or, or better yet, you know, as some of these kids have, have learned the hard way, you know, there's easy money to be made doing things that are illegal. Uh, and we don't want them to do that, especially when you realize, again, the largest group of students in our schools are Latinos, Hispanics. They will be our future. And if you do not educate them, not only their future, but everyone else's future is going to be not as good as it should have been. And, and that's why it's important. We, we have to fight back. Uh, and, and for me to sit back and know that that is going on 
And, and knowing that, that God has blessed me with the opportunity to provide for my family, we could easily just say, no, I'm not going to get involved yeah, in that. Yeah, things aren't going to change. Things are going to change. You know, I'm just not going to, I'm going to worry about myself, me, mind. myself, exactly. and I. But what happens there is it, it comes back to you anyway because you end up having to pay for you know, the care that, that is given at, at emergency rooms. You end up having to pay for the truancy problems that we have. You end up paying for all these other issues that are created because a child was not given the education that they needed to succeed. And, and it's not to say that everyone is going to go to college. Everyone is going to become a, a doctor or a lawyer. But ch children, for example, at the craft training center, I've, I've, I've gone and I've met with them it's These awesome. are students that are are making good amount of money, Joe. Uh, a lot pipe fitters, welders, welders, you know, pipe it, fitters, you know, electrical engineers, and, and it's and it's tough work, but it's providing them the opportunity to, um, you know, buy a home, buy a car, provide for their families, uh, save money to the extent that they want it for something, education, college education, uh, you know, things of that nature. And so, but if you take that away, you're taking away a person's dream. Yeah. Whether it's to be a school teacher, a welder, the, uh, an entrepreneur, the, the owner of a radio broadcasting station uh, like Humberto Lozano Lopez and his family. I mean, think of, of the opportunities that he has provided for his family, all of his children. And he never gave up. He never and gave up. Without a penny. Never gave up. And, and he fought and went forward and did everything, not for himself, but for his children and his family. And you look now at the family, you see Ernest Lopez, Carlos Lopez, you see all of these that are part of the family's business. It has created an opportunity uh, now for me, for example, and yourself and everyone else who feels like we want to share our story. Think if that were not available for Mr. Lopez. Think if, or, or his children, for example, if the education wasn't there, if the individuals like the school teachers weren't there, uh, if the doctors that uh, were providing care for, for him and his family weren't there, think of what we would be living in. Uh, it would be chaos. Uh, it, would, it would create a lot of problems. And, and instead, what we need to do is fight back. We have to show that we will hold these elected officials accountable and change the system so that we allow America to be what it was founded upon, and that was to create and allow for opportunities. And one of those obligations that the state has by constitution is for public education. Well, and uh, we're gonna take a brief break. When we come back, uh, we're gonna talk more with Abel Herrero, who wants your vote for state rep. Don't forget, election day is in November, but you register now, today. Regístrese para votar porque recuerde que su voto es su voz. Y recuerde que el Partido Demócrata no es el partido de los pobres, como dicen unos, pero es el partido de justicia social para todos. So we're going to come back, but I, again, thanks to our sponsors, River City Hospice, 882-5900, and Vasquez Flores Home Health, 881-9922. We're going to be back with Abel Herrero. We're going to talk more about uh, what is going on, the state of Texas, and uh, how he wants to serve you guys when we come back. Hola, soy Joe Flores, abogado, recordándole que es muy importante que salga a votar. Este año en Texas se han cortado programas importantes. Esto es a causa de las decisiones de los registradores republicanos que le han dado más importancia a ganancias que a personas. Le han dado más importancia a corporaciones y compañías de seguro. Este año electoral, regístrese para votar el partido de la gente, personas trabajadores, maestros, enfermeros y familias. Vote demócrata. Hi, this is attorney and board certified nurse practitioner Joe Flores on behalf of Vasquez Flores Home Health. Nursing homes have their place, but having care in your own home is very important. Call today for more information. Backed by over 20 years of experience, registered nurse Priscilla Vasquez can answer your questions about home care. Call 881-9922, that's 881-9922 today. Have you been arrested or are potentially facing criminal charges? You need a trial attorney who is well-versed in the courtroom. Joe Flores has handled hundreds of criminal cases and many of them to trial. 
Joe Flores can provide you with competent representation to protect your constitutional rights in state and federal court. Joe Flores can help if you have been arrested or facing criminal charges. The Law Offices of Joe Flores. Equal justice for all. I think it's a, a betrayal of public trust. That is just not ethical. I left the Democratic Party because of her. The reason is, is because you're taking Republican money. The money of those people that pay me as a consultant. What are you taking? Why did you take it cross town? Took money. I saw it and I saw them paying checks. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Everybody. Call River City Hospice for your loved one's care today. River City Hospice is a compassionate, patient-centered health care provider with a unique approach to medical care and support for people at the end of life and their families. River City Hospice focuses on maintaining dignity, increasing quality of life, and providing comfort and reducing pain due to illness. Hospice care allows your loved one to be treated with dignity and respect and gives them the right to choose. Call 82-5900 today. Hope, dignity, and love. It's got to be River City Hospice. And we're back after a brief break. You're watching South Texas Crossfire with your host, Attorney Joe Flores, right here on KTMV, the only station with political teeth. And uh, we want to thank our sponsors, River City Hospice, 882-5900. Call them if your loved one has severe heart, lung, kidney, or other problems, uh, severe diabetes, not eating, or Alzheimer's. Give them a call to learn more information about hospice. It's not what you think, 882-5900. And also Vasquez Flores Home Health. Many of you young men and women out there, or just anybody who wants to help out people and start an exciting career in health care, call Vasquez Flores Home, home Care. That's where you start. That's where I started being a home home health aid, being a provider, and that uh, it speaks miles for what you do. And I tell everybody, volunteer, go out to a senior center, go out there and visit the elderly, go visit your neighbor, make sure they're doing okay, get involved. And as we said earlier in this segment, it's not just about taking care of our own, we have to pay for it up front and take care of everybody. So we're back with Abel Ledero, uh wanting to be your state rep in Austin, Texas. Welcome back, Abel. Thank you, Joe. Well, we were having a spirited discussion about uh, bad choices that were made in Austin in the last couple of years, and everything is local. As Tip O'Neill used to say, all politics is local, right? Um, great Speaker of the House. So let's talk about local politics. How has the representation, in your opinion, uh, been devastating to Texans in, in the district that you're running in? Uh, is it 34 still? District 34, 34. right. 34. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, how has that leadership the last two years differed or caused uh, great turmoil in, in here locally for us? Well, Joe, as I was mentioning earlier, the, the, the Republican leadership um, has, has created a situation that is not good at all for the state of Texas. Uh, and when you look at how our elected officials, specifically our Republican incumbent, Connie Scott, for example, my opponent, uh, when you look at her voting record and you realize, you know, that the priorities of this district, 34, are different than the agenda of the Republican Party. Uh, you would hope that as an elected official representing this district that they would prioritize those of this district. But instead, when you look at the vote on public education, uh, my opponent voted to cut the budget for public education by $5.4 billion, voted to, uh, in essence, fire uh, or have help teachers fired in the, the numbers of 15,000 uh, on the higher end, uh, voted to uh, overcrowd our classrooms, voted to uh, create more standardized tests or more red tape for our school teachers, and um, has now uh, created a situation where our seniors may not have the medical care that they need uh, and have earned over their years um, when it comes to not fully funding uh, the reimbursement rates for our doctors here in this area. So if, if you are an individual that has 
uh, uh, someone that you know that is going to school or you have someone that uh, is receiving care from a doctor, uh, a senior for example, th this is an all out um, lack of prioritizing those issues that are important to this district. When you look at Texas windstorm insurance for example, uh, the votes that my opponent took are against those of a homeowner, against those of a consumer uh, uh, situation. And this is so public record? Are you going to pull these voting? We're, we're, we'll show you exactly every specific vote that this individual Do took. Do you have that that you, we can put up on TV? We'll, we'll, we'll get you those votes. Uh, and, and these are coming uh, also, you know, that, that have been reviewed, for example, on American uh, Federation of Teachers. In fact, when you look at the, the report card that they gave her, uh, she got, I think, anywhere up to 7% out of 100%, uh -huh. but uh, the, the point is that it was, she didn't prioritize public education. And, and it's not to say that the, she attacked homeowners, but it's the fact that she didn't protect homeowners against the insurance company. Well, it, it's news that people will get to know and understand when they look at uh, the votes, and then when you go visit your doctor, or when you realize that the school teacher that you loved and, and appreciated for the hard work that they were doing is no longer there. We have been able to get the support of many doctors that, that have said, we cannot continue to support an individual that does not recognize and understand, or if she does, has consciously chose to ignore the, the concerns and priorities of seniors uh, that are in need of care. So, Connie Scott, you're saying on the record today, has voted against seniors, teachers, homeowners, uh, 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 the elderly, the poor, uh, and, and doctors and nurses. That's exactly right. And, and it's not me and saying it. And you stand it. by that. I will stand by it. I will, I will show. I want to see this pull. record. I want to put it on TV for our 100,000 subscribers to see. And, and we will let you know exactly. But those are the issues. And, when, and, and please follow our campaign because what we're going to be doing is... Where, where's the website? Where's the Facebook it, so Dave can put it up? It, it'll be ablerero.com. Uh, right now we've got... Facebook? A, what about Facebook? Is, is Facebook? Can they friend you? Facebook, they can friend us. Uh, you know, follow us on Facebook.